Looking in. I am drawn to the cage, something exotic, spiced by another world. A kind of lovebird. When one turns away, the petals of the palest cream rose bloom on its neck. How can a yellow so electric be pastel? This is the underlength of a tale. Why this desire to devour them, mouth full of feathers, free them into the vast oblivion that I am? What's there in their wrinkle-lidded swivel vision, some inarticulate promise of sky and body, broken and broken by a grid of catastrophe? I know a dwarf macaw that sleeps between Elizabeth's breasts, who picks a flake of skin ever so gently with his beak from her nose. Is this how I love? And I have taken a wrong turn and wondered, am I lost or in a blessing? And small with uncertainty, parked the car and entered a steel warehouse door on a barren industrial lane. The sign on the place, this is how we're loved, advertised <coughs> the one obscure thing I've been looking for. The Nature of the Beast. All week I had wanted the beach deserted, to see no human form as I walked, to make a pretense of frontier so there would be no obstacle to the miracle if I should vanish into daisies or out across the sea, no one to hold my body in the thick of human vision a body that wanted to thin its tissue and mesh with the gauze of other matters. But it was eerie to that be out there alone, this alien morning, before sunup, after last night's storm, the sand all wrestled into swirls and every tire rut and footmark filled in. I slid down dunes, the moon rolling its head across my back, turned to face its visage. Where was the mouth that sang vowels two nights ago? Eroded bluffs, moonshine glistening everywhere. Is everything the ghost of something else? The whole was folding into itself, turning forward and away. Titanium sea, Orange blue, molten. Did someone whisper, hey, in my hood? Pipers come, rim of sun appear. <clears throat> Unkempt graveyard near the shore. Trespassing on ground of former love. Tussocks whisper here of nests and the vanquished. Swans hiss and fish nearby, undoing the slipknots of their throats. Cool, eroded, greening headstones. Wetlands with no relief from tides. I come here often to wonder how to live and listen. Clean. The sea is astringent and dries in salt lace. On the rocks peaked up like beaten cream, the morning tide whisks the tide pools clean, and snails amp up their suction on rock. Dazzling gown, wave, my heart is your wild tangerine rose, freed from the tight green fist of its bud.
I used to live um, just across uh, Route 1 in Rye, New York, from a, a marshlands bird preserve. And um, the property directly abutted a big golf course. And um, for a while, I wanted to get up before the sunrise because it's just a very, very magical time <coughs> for the seabirds. They, you know, everything starts happening and they're so excited. And so I would go there at that time and watch the whole process, but I was going to be late this morning and I wanted to just run down and cut in, run down the golf course and cut in and I was completely stopped by seeing a blue heron in the golf course pond. Poised in her elegant lean, watching the underskin of the steaming pond, she is a study in patience. I stand enchanted by her long stillness, my body planted there, fast inside, wondering how badly the water's tainted, considering the perfect lawn all around and what it takes to discipline this wild ground. One quick jab, one tear at the chiffon water, and she is swallowing whole a thrashing fish. Then she moves giraffe-like and quiet, a tender frog gliding towards the other shore where the insects mumble is scissored quick now in her classical beak. Dark doilies of trees on the water the fish and frog dissolve inside that fine blue Buddha. Suddenly, my presence comes to her, and she snaps out her startling other shape. The wing spread, she works to the feather tips. I see her fly into the lightest spot, far into the only day as it breaks. <clears throat> a housewife waters her house plants. Grabby little roots, succulent and thirsty, seethe in the tense soil she's just watered. Cells of petals, sectioned like tripe, draw trace elements through the pith as a flute lures the cobra. Where the wind blows them together, the leaves Slubbing from the sun, the drug that it gives them, kiss and kiss. And the sticky green blood sorts its cash. Some of it stone crushed beyond her ability to see. She wonders, are there impulses in stone that quicken at the root's approach? That hear some call of the green imagining to climb to the endless hidden leaves inside. Hmm. Words of an abstract water lily. <clears throat> the thing to climb to? A kaleidoscopic view held to this dominant eye. A future that draws the mud light we're all sunk in up to the motives of sunlight and wind. For every stem with the will, there's a last dull lengthening, then a coming to, passing up through the lips of lake water, where from the broken clutches of our own buds, delicate interiors flare. Words of a dying stingray. <laughs> Where did you go, my self-lived waves? I'm beached, a laboring lung that was, just before, electric in a made-for-me domain. Now raw air through shocked valves, my stinger tail whips at grit. Washes of soft surf tease, then nothing. Go ahead. Come near, pierce, tear at my numbness. It feels good in a strange, exquisite way. Everything fading, including me.
What's going on? Horses mosey across the black lake at the center of the sunflower. I turn away when the pink sun sharpens its claws on the mountain. Light blinks at the tips of leaves that suffer their sights underground. Straw is beaming drum beats back into stars. The zippers of feathers are rejoining for flight. Alone in a beer bubble, a sweating violinist links and undoes a chain of numbers. Shells are building themselves in the sleep of seaweed. It costs too much, so we don't pay attention. A reindeer stag is rubbing moss off its head branch, a weapon whose incipience was pure imagination. Matter imagines its future. This is how change happens. Desire becomes motion, becomes texture in time. You know, I've lived a pretty unconventional life, and I've gathered no moss. <laughs> I've lived a lot of different places, done a lot of traveling. And um, there was a process of coming <coughs> to make Vermont my full-time home. Um, I had an apartment in Manhattan for seven years and was kind of going back and forth. And um, so the beginning of this poem refers to leaving the urban life. Uh, although a lot of the poem refers back to other places I've lived and other times in my life. But it's called My Calling. Jack hammered morning and starless night, keep yourself. Who never got out of bed till noon was a despot. A bit of chalk or talc or cake, a small catch or clasp there in a voice I'd grown to love, hardly recollected. Persimmons, heavy in the orchard, glutted with their own starch and sweet water, thud to the ground, split, the pool too cold to go in by then. How does a body cinched into sections like that even talk to itself? Three ants struggle to drag a dead one. Welters of sorrow rise to pitches that urge even broken wings to fly. I excel at so long. <laughs> Shadow of the cupola on whitewash across the way. Wood grain in a beat, bleeding a peninsula on the kitchen center island. The brook racing, tumbling in a gully beyond earshot. Quails with decorated heads purr and scoot across the lane into my raised glass bottom. One more dip and turn in this music, and I won't be there ever again. Had I a career, I might be famous for calling in sick. <laughs> <laughs> and during the years in New York, I did some volunteering uh, at uh, Bellevue Hospital and at Around, those, around the same time, my aunt was uh, dying in a public nursing home, so I kind of crunched the uh, experiences together into this uh, fictional poem, this fictional expression. In the public nursing home, I listen, lean closer, sudden rank odor of yellow or missing teeth. Dry lips quiver in attempts to retaste her past, drawing hard on frayed neurons, scrambled sequences, fugitive faces, her eyes cast down to the right, mist train, spade in soil, squinting there, watery for fled memory, drowned vocabulary, moist who, what, where, inscrutable steam. Gelatin thickened orange juice in a plastic cup on the laminate swing table next to her. 
She cannot swallow a liquid anymore. Bewildered, bluebell eyes rise to mine. I pick up her crumpled, cool bone hand, crazed with gray-green veins, and say, doesn't matter. Did you love? Did you ever love? Like most of us, I'm really concerned about the, uh, the loss of species and the threat to uh, life on the planet, including ours. And this, uh, this came out of that. Magma. An iguana tanks into mosaic shade on an island hill. Wind swizzles through grasses, and peepers cheap up in trees come dusk. I imagine our ever-shared circle of fusion elevate, sizzling from that turquoise horizon, exciting all the finches with lyrics of light, rooster on a broken wall, clarion, primordial. Sea, misks, sea mists are in-breaths, of pelican and palm. Sand is broken shark teeth, coral, bone, shell, stone. Digested plants morph to muscle, cartilage, collagen. Fire makes lye and, ma and lathers. We eat and breathe the dead. Even if nothing now living survives, Sudden blue voltage and lava within them have it to begin again. One can only hope. <laughs> okay, the title of this <clears throat> is sine qua non, and that's a fairly commonly used Latin phrase that directly translates to without which not. So we say sine qua non to mean, you know, if you don't have this, you, you're not going to get that. And for me, this, this relates to um, the perception of beauty in, in everyday life. I stop to eavesdrop on arpeggios of a spotted egg in the grass. My eyes trace up rivers of bark, chest pianoing for the nest, green flutter there. And later, when I add a silver bowl of oranges to a blue-white tablecloth washed with flutes of violet light, a bow draws low across a cello, and tomorrow dew warms to nothing in nasturtiums, honey from a turn of spoon needles into teacups of ghosts and violas. And this is the last poem. Uh, I don't know if you know that song from Camelot, that, that famous musical. Um, I'm not a good singer, but if ever I should leave you, it wouldn't be in springtime. It goes through the different seasons. And this poem is my homage to the natural world, particularly the forest and the forest's love for its creatures, if ever. Sop, loam, humus drawn upon by trout lilies, ramps, spring beauties, and towering forms that share themselves with moss, beetle, fungi, lichen. Roots wriggle in concert with bird dreams of woven strings and vines tucked in cruxes. Glittering star-lustered insects munch on plentiful leaves, take wing, get eaten. Tree massacred by woodpecker team, none worrying. Seed pods split, arousing wind wakes, silks shining. Forest sees all at once, with owl eyes, fox, deer, porcupine, mine. Are they mine, or just the earth's? White bark, shaggy bark, vertical bark, gnarly bark.
russet floor. Then air from north. Snow crumples on rill stones. Ice wafers trickle unders. New sentience soon unfurls. Tender orange newts bust out everywhere. Forest singing, never would I leave you.